Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Bernie and in today's video, I will give you my take and review on why I think this Panasonic 14mm pancake lens is so underrated. Let's go! I'd say that everyone filming with a GH5 or a G9 should have one in their kit. It's affordable enough and as of this video, you can actually get the version 2 of this one for almost 200 US dollars on a BH Photo and this one has 7 rounded diaphragm blades if you wanted to know about some of the specs. I also did not notice any chromatic aberrations and distortions but for those of you who have this lens, please let me know in the comment section if you have noticed one. All right. So anyway guys, I will also link below the price of this lens on Amazon Canada and Amazon US. Please note though that uh, they are affiliate links if bought from Amazon. This is basically a prime lens and I have here the version 1 which I got years ago and man, the form factor alone is worth it that this lens is tiny and light and can definitely fit your pocket. A simple lens that is very capable, it's also unobtrusive and can definitely be used in any shooting situations like that of vlogging or even a static camera lens mounted on a tripod for time lapse use. Yes guys? or it is actually a great gimbal lens too. Next is that it has a 2.5 aperture and it's a fast lens and can definitely be used if lighting is an issue. But of course guys, we all know that the GH5 and the G9 slow light capabilities are not the best compared to the Sony ones. But still I'd say that this lens really helps in low light situations and uh, thanks to its 2.5 aperture. All right, moving on now. Next is that it's sharp as you can see in the sample wedding video right now, but I would say not too sharp. It is is just right in my taste. The uh, color rendition coming out of this lens is amazing and it's actually on par with my Olympus Pro 12 to 40 millimeter f 2.8 lens and I actually reviewed that lens if you want to see it click the link right here. Last but not the least it has a micro four thirds mount. There's no need for an adapter with this one since it's really native to the GH5 and a G9. Really guys this lens is amazing and won't break the the bank in my opinion if you will get one. But what about drawbacks? Well, the build quality is not that great since it's made of uh, hard plastic as you can see right now and with only some metal parts in the back for the connection to the sensor or to the main camera. So definitely handle with care. But I would say so far, I had this lens for about 10 years now and I have never had an issue at all with the build quality. It's plastic, but it's well made and it's robust. All right, moving on now. Next drawback for me is that it's hard to use manually if you are trying to turn the focus ring since it's so tiny. Yeah, guys, the focus ring right here is so tiny if it's mounted onto your camera and really kind of hard to focus. Yeah, guys, I'm always having trouble adjusting it manually. So I always have it on auto and just use the camera to handle the autofocus and it's autofocusing is really fast enough. So guys, this is the one lens that I can't live without and it's always in my bag whenever I need it since it's very portable and really doesn't take any space at all. I also use this all the time to film my talking head videos like this one on my YouTube channel. I'd say I have been using this 90% of the time and it works like a charm. Alright, so who is this lens for? This is really great for those starting out with micro four thirds system like that of the newly released GH5 II. You won't really notice if it's already attached to the camera since it's so thin and light. Really great as a travel lens as well as for weddings and talking head videos as I mentioned earlier. It also has a nice focal length which is not too wide in my opinion and uh, yeah, I really really like it. It's basically a 28 millimeter lens in 30 35 millimeter equivalent and great for portrait shots. So for you to be able to achieve either a close-up shot or a wide shot, all you have to do is just to stay away from the subject or just be closer to get the shots you need. 
This lens is also great for those starting out with videography in general. Like for example, wedding videography, this is really a great addition to your kit. Overall, you can go wrong with this lens just like the 50mm Minolta Rokor which I reviewed as well and can be found on this link right here. And guys, this lens is amazing, enough said, and I highly, highly recommend it. So what do you guys think? Do you also have this lens in your kit? What do you like or don't like about it? Let me know in the comments comment section and let's discuss that's about it for this video guys if you find it helpful please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and while you're at it please don't forget to hit that bell notification icon to be notified with more awesome videos so until next time i will see you in the next video goodbye for now